You have already learned how to calculate a confidence interval for a population mean when the value of the population standard deviation is known. Using a side-by-side -side comparison, let's see what is different when we calculate a confidence interval for a population mean when the value for the population standard deviation is not known. Since our population is normal, it is okay that our sample size is small, less than 30. Because when the population is normal, the sampling distribution for the sample mean is normal, no matter how small your sample size is. The first difference between these two that we notice is we will be using the sample standard deviation, S, instead of the population standard deviation. To make up for this extra variability of a sample standard deviation that varies from sample to sample, we will be using the T distribution instead of the Z distribution. Let's suppose we want a confidence level of 99%. Figuring out what the area in the right tail is follows the same logic as before. What is different is what happens after we find the area in the right tail. Over here, we use the TI-8384 calculator function inverse norm to find the z-score, which is the critical value. But with the t-distribution, we also need to calculate the degrees of freedom, which happens to be an easy calculation. Just subtract 1 from the sample size. So we have a degrees of freedom of 15. We only need this value and the area in the right tail in order to look up the t-score in the t-table. Use the degrees of freedom to find the row you need and the area in the right tail to find the column you need. And where the row and column collide is where you will find your t-score, which is the critical value, 2.947. When the population standard deviation is known, we use the z-distribution which follows the empirical rule. It tells us we need to go 2.5758 standard errors above and below the population mean in order to contain the middle 99% of all the possible sample means that we could get. When the population standard deviation is not known, we use the t-distribution, which is sloppier than the z-distribution, for it does not follow the empirical rule. The mound is flatter, and the tails are fatter. So we have to go out further to contain the middle 99%. The smaller the sample size is, the sloppier the t-curve is. And the farther we have to go out to contain the middle 99%. In our case here, we need to go 2.947 standard errors above and below the population mean in order to contain the middle 99% of all possible sample means that we could get. That's further than 
Using the T table instead of inverse norm on your TI-8384 is the only part that really feels different. As you will see in our side-by-side -side comparison, the rest of the work is very similar. Look at our calculation for the margin of error E. For the critical value, we use a z-score here and a t-score here. We use the population standard deviation here and the sample standard deviation here. That's not too different. And now that you have your margin of error E calculated, the rest of these two procedures are identical. You add and subtract the margin of error from the sample mean. This gives you the lower bound and upper bound for your confidence interval. When the population standard deviation was known, we are 99% confident that the population mean is between 7.05 and 9.95 inches. Now when the population standard deviation is not known, we will have to go out farther to make up for this. So if the population standard deviation is not known, and we take a random sample of size 16, we are 99% confident that the population mean is between 6.91 and 10.09 inches. Now let's get the answer using our TI calculator. Press the STAT key. Press the right arrow key twice to highlight tests. Let me scroll down here so that I can see both Z interval and T interval. How do you remember which one to use? If you used the Z distribution, you use Z interval because the population standard deviation was known. If you use the T distribution, you use T interval because the population standard deviation was not known. Let's do Z interval first. Press the 7 key to select it. Highlight stats and press enter if it is not already highlighted. Press the down arrow key to get down to the next line. Now enter in your values. Highlight, calculate, and then press enter. We see this agrees with our answer. Now let's do T interval. Press the stat key. Press the right arrow key twice to highlight tests. Let me scroll down here so that I can see T interval. Press the 8 key to select it. Highlight stats and press enter if it is not already highlighted. Press the down arrow key to get down to the next line. Now enter in your values. Highlight, calculate, and then press enter. We see this agrees with our answer.